Hi everybody, Jacob Reed here from ReviewEcon.com. Today we're going to be looking at the Microeconomics FRQ from 2022. This is question number one from set one. To make sure you're ready for this question, you should be through unit six. To get a link to the question and the rubric, head into the description down below. Let's get into it. So for this question, we're starting off with a firm that has some carbon capture technology. They are the only producer of this device. That means they are going to be a monopoly and this firm is earning an economic profit. They are also producing the profit maximizing quantity of output. So we're going to draw a graph for this monopoly. We're going to label the profit maximizing quantity labeled QM, the price the firm charges as PM, and we are going to shade the area of consumer surplus completely. When we draw this graph, we need to start off with our axes labeled P and Q and have a downward sloping demand curve. I have mine also labeled AR for average revenue and price. All three of those are equal, demand, average revenue, and price that is. And we have our marginal revenue curve below the demand. Since we're going to be shading the consumer surplus in a little bit, it's best to have that demand curve touching that Y axis. That way we have a clear triangle shaded for that consumer surplus. Once we have our demand and marginal revenue curve drawn, then we're going to add in the marginal cost curve, find the intersection between the marginal cost and marginal revenue curve, drop down below, and that is our profit maximizing quantity that we're going to label QM as instructed. Now, when it comes to the price the monopoly is going to charge, we don't find it right there at the MR equals MC point. We go up above to the demand curve, and that is the price the firm charges labeled PM. Since this firm is earning economic profit, we also need to add in the average total cost curve. I suggest you draw in the average total cost curve after you have the price mark, because now that we have our profit maximizing quantity, and the profit maximizing price, we know that at that point on the demand curve, we need to have the average total cost curve below because a low average total cost and a high average revenue tells us that this firm is earning economic profit. Finally, we have to shade in our area of consumer surplus. We find it by looking at the price being charged of PM, go all the way over till you get to the quantity of QM and then shade all the way up to the demand curve. And that triangle right there, is our area of consumer surplus. Now, as we know, monopolies don't produce the allocatively efficient quantity. They underproduce and they overcharge as well. So the next part of the question deals with regulating this monopoly. First of all, for part BI, we have the government considering taxing this firm. And the question asks us if a per unit tax could cause this firm to produce the allocatively efficient or socially optimal quantity of output. And we have to explain. Now let's remember that on the graph, the socially optimal quantity of output is where the price or demand curve equals the marginal cost. So we find that quantity right there. Now, if we had a per unit tax levied on this firm, that's going to shift the average total cost curve and marginal cost curve upward. And that would result in a lower MR equals MC quantity of Q1 right there. As you can see, Q1, which is the quantity we would get after the tax, is actually further away from QO than QM is. That leads us to our answer of no. A per unit tax is not going to lead us to the socially optimal quantity of output because a per unit tax will shift the marginal cost upward and that decreases the quantity of output, bringing it further away from the socially optimal quantity of output found at MC equals D. The next part of B assumes that the government is going to impose a price ceiling on the firm to force them to produce the socially optimal level of output. On the graph we've already drawn, we have to label the quantity that we're going to get and the price labeled QC and PC respectively. So over on that graph, we already know that the quantity we're looking for is at MC equals D, and that's also where the price is going to be, right there. If we label both of those, that's going to give us the point for this part. For part B triple I, we need to explain if this firm is earning an economic profit once the price ceiling has been imposed. And if we look at the way we drew our graph at the quantity of QC, PC is greater than the average total cost at that quantity. That means that this firm is still earning economic profit. That means our price is high and our average total cost curve is low at the quantity of QC. Now this answer will depend on how you drew your graph and the relationship between the price of PC and the average total cost at QC. But based on the way I drew the graph for you, yes, the firm is earning economic profit and that's because the price is greater than the average total cost curve at QC. And if you identify it and explain it correctly, you get your point. For part C, we have a new scenario, and now the firm is going to be producing the quantity of output that maximizes total revenue. For part C, I, we are asked if the firm produces one more unit of output, if that is going to make marginal revenue be positive, 
negative, or zero? And we have to explain. In order to answer this question, let's take a look at our graph one more time. And we should remember that maximizing total revenue is found where marginal revenue is zero. That's because marginal revenue is the change in total revenue. And for earlier units, marginal revenue is positive. That means total revenue will be increasing. At higher units, marginal revenue is negative, and that means total revenue is decreasing. So total revenue is going to be maximized where marginal revenue is zero. And as we can see, higher units being produced have a negative marginal revenue on this graph. So the answer here is negative because maximizing total revenue is where marginal revenue equals zero, and the next unit produced has a negative marginal revenue. So total revenue will decrease. For part C double I, we are asked if the firm reduces price by 10%, will the quantity demanded increase by less than 10%, more than 10%, or exactly 10%? In order to answer this part of the question, we have to remember the three areas of the demand curve based on the marginal revenue curve below. As long as marginal revenue is positive, we have an elastic demand curve. When marginal revenue is zero, that is the unit elastic point on the demand curve above, and when marginal revenue is negative, that's the inelastic range of the demand curve. And over on our monopoly graph, we see that future units beyond the total revenue maximization point, we are going to have a negative marginal revenue. That means we have entered the inelastic range of the demand curve. And when it comes to inelastic coefficients, the percentage change of quantity will be less than the percentage change of price. And that's how we get a coefficient that is less than one. So the answer to this question is less than. And there you have it. There's your answers to microeconomics question number one, set one from 2022. If you still need more help, head over to reviewecon.com where there's lots of games and activities to help you practice the skills you need to know on your AP microeconomics and macroeconomics exam. If you need more help after that, pick up the total review booklet. It has everything you need to know to ace those exams. That's it for now. I'll see y'all next time.